Well that was an interesting little dive. I've just put on my scuba gear and dived underneath ABC here in the marina at Cash. The bow thruster anode, the keel anode and the prop anode are all looking as they were last time I dived, which was in Greece. Um, the prop anode is still... Today is the day that we released episode number 133, which is the one that talks about the fizzing prop shaft anode. Since we've arrived in Turkey, we've had several of the best minds in the marina thinking about it and offering us suggestions. And one of the things that could alleviate the issue is to reattach the grounding wire that runs from the engine body uh, back through the fiberglass and towards the P-bracket. Um, a lot of people have also suggested that there's a grounding plate on the hull. Well, we went all over the hull while we were on the hard and there's certainly no sign of any grounding plate as such. It could be that the P-bracket is the grounding plate. Either way, that uh, earthing strap from the engine body back towards the P-bracket has never been attached since we bought the boat. In fact, it was neatly tucked away somewhere and wrapped up with a cable tie by the previous owners. So I'm just, I'm just going to reattach it anyway. So I'll show you what I've got to do that job. This is the part of the strap that attaches to the body of the engine and I'm not sure if you can see but it is highly corroded and the reason for that was because the expansion tank of the cooling system overflowed quite a lot because of the position it was originally in, I've since moved it, and it's just corroded through this. So what I'm going to do is get this wire, attach it to here and then undo the zip tie that is holding the rest of this neatly packaged away and reattach the other end of this into here and that will reattach that connection. Will it make a difference? We don't know but it's a connection that should be made so we're going to do it. And there is the other end of the earthing strap all nicely tied up with a zip tie. We'll clean off the grubby corroded end and get that connection remade. On the engine it actually goes on that bolt there and there is the new earthing strap connection to the engine block. We're not sure whether that is going to fix or solve the problem, but at least it is another step in the right direction of something that should have been done properly in the first place. One bite at a time. Well, that was an interesting little dive. I've just put on my scuba gear and dived underneath ABC here in the marina at Cash. And the good news is that the prop anode is still attached to the prop. It's still very much intact. Uh, in fact, there's probably just a little bit of deterioration you would expect for an anode uh, that's been underwater attached to the boat for that long. Uh, all of the other anodes, uh, the bow thruster anode, the keel anode and the prop anode are all looking as they were last time I dived, which was in Greece. I then, of course, took the half remnant of the anode that was fizzing down and touched that against the bare stainless steel of the prop shaft and it didn't fizz. That then doesn't necessarily mean that the problem is solved. Of course we have reattached an earthing strap to the engine itself uh, which then runs back through the boat and attaches to the P-bracket. So have we simply diverted the issue from running through the prop shaft and now it's running through the earthing strap to the P-bracket? I don't know. The only way I can test that is that next time we're out at anchor or maybe even again here in the marina I can disconnect that earthing strap take this down touch it against the prop shaft and see if it fizzes if it doesn't fizz at that point then whatever fiddling around I've done disconnecting all the batteries and all the cables and connections and retrying everything one 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 at a time then somehow I've miraculously fixed it and still don't know what the initial problem was so it's kind of solved but in the back of my mind I'd like a more solid conclusion, but we'll see how we go on. I'm feeling a lot more confident now that I've, I've dived on the, the prop shaft and saw that the anode is very much intact. We've been hearing from friends and family about rising tensions between Greece and Turkey over gas exploration around the island of Mace. It is a Greek island, but it's very, very close to the Turkish coast. And really, from our perspective here on the ground, 
just looks like a lot of saber rattling. We have heard and seen a lot of different types of helicopters flying pretty low across the uh, marina area and then out across towards the Greek island of Mace. The reality is that nothing's really changed here. Life goes on as normal and apart from the annoying noise from the helicopters, you wouldn't know there was anything different. This meeting is convened courtesy of Henrik Thistrup. Thank you, Henrik, and yes. welcome back to our patron family. Yeah, thank you. It's good to have you back aboard. This, this little restaurant in the marina uh, is fairly new. Um, it's called Alps Wine House, and I've been told that the fish and chips they do here is extremely good. And while we were in Greece over winter, I had this hankering for fish and chips. So giving that a try on the menu tonight and then just having steak. steak. So that's pretty good. Yeah. And we've got a nice bottle of white wine yeah. to wash it all down. And also one of the reasons why we're here tonight is because we're just going to sit down and have a chat about what our next move is now that we're in the marina, we've signed the contract, um, we've got pretty much all of the big jobs sorted. Uh, it's just a few little cosmetic things to do now. So we're going to decide what we're going to do. Yeah, where we're going to go, how long we're going to go away from. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, with this marina contract, we do get the choice of going to the nine other Seto marinas in the group up and down the coast here. As well as anchoring in one of the many, many beautiful bays up and down the coast. Yeah. So that's, that's the plan for our discussion over mm. this dinner. Yes. So... Here is my fishy chippies. That looks really scrummy. And that mm, is delicious steak. A steak with veggies and no chippies. And rock for sauce. Ooh, that sounds special. It certainly does. Yeah. Yum oh. They were very good because I didn't want I did want chips, but I asked for no chips and extra veggies and they they did. It's really nice. Enjoy Baz. My empty plate probably tells you how good the fish and chips was. The fish batter was just so crispy, it was just beautiful. And the white fish was firm and, and fleshy. Uh, really, really good fish and chips. Highly recommend that. I didn't like mine at all, as you can tell. <laughs> it was delicious. The steak was perfectly cooked. The um, Roquefort cheese sauce was just right and the veggies were really well cooked. It was just the right amount and I enjoyed it with a very nice glass of red wine. So Henrik, I think we can call that a successful meeting of the Admiral and the Captain. Thank you very much. Thank you, and, indeed. And we have made some decisions about our next move. We're actually going to scope out a couple of anchorages further south and east of here and that will tie in with us bringing on board crew from our patrons and uh, we'll give you more details about patrons being crew on board ABC a little bit later once yeah. we've ironed out all the details of that. Yeah, yeah. but it's going to be a new tier. Absolutely. So look out for these peeps. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, time to sit back and just relax and take Enjoy. in the atmosphere. Yeah. Cheers. Place. Cheers. A clash of music from one place to the other. I know. What do you do? I don't know. Um, it was very good actually. It was uh, less than 400 lira. Uh, 80 Aussie dollars. 80, 80 bucks. Yeah. It's very good. Wow. Well, very good. <laughs> Don't you <give> <laughs> Following on from our battery charging situation while on shore power, the temporary solution that we've put in place to charge the bow thruster battery in the forward locker uh, is just that, it's temporary. So I had a chat with Mike Jones here at Cash Marina and after a bit of thinking, his suggestion makes absolute sense. It is the most cost effective and also 
considering the location of the battery, the most easily monitored. So what we bought is a Victron 15 amp battery charger that runs from the shore power. So I'm going to show you what the unit looks like and explain to you how we're going to uh, put that in situ in the forward locker and run the 220 shore power cables to it. This is the unit, a Blue Smart charger, the IP65 from Victron Energy. And I'll just unwrap this so you can have a look at the very compact size and also the cabling that we're going to use as well. We get our instructions that I'm actually going to read because when I'm doing anything that involves electricity, whether it's 220 volts or 12 volts, I'm always going to read the instructions on a boat. This is how it comes in the package and quite a simple setup. Once we run the 220 cabling to the forward locker, we can just put a plug on the end, a standard European plug, and plug this unit in to the 220. Once this unit is installed into the locker, we really won't have easy visual access to be able to read what all the various LED lights are telling us. The good thing about this one, and one of the main reasons we chose this one, is because it also has Bluetooth. So it will send the information that it's doing here to a app on your phone via Bluetooth, so it can be monitored from anywhere on the boat. As this unit can also be used by people just charging their car battery in the garage, it comes with two types of connection to the battery. And both of them connect to the output on the unit simply by clicking into place and this little plastic piece locks it into place. This one of course has a positive and negative crocodile clip on the end, but for a more permanent solution, We will be, of course, connecting this and connecting the positive and negative to the battery terminals. It's been another one of those hot and sweaty days, dashing between the inside of the boat and the forward locker here where the bow thruster battery resides. We have got the 12 volt 15 amp battery charger now installed and we did have a bit of a lucky break. There's a bit of string here and I didn't know what it was for so I had a closer look and it turns out that that string is a mousing line that runs through a piece of conduit that goes all the way back behind the saloon seats. So we attached another piece of mousing line to the mousing line, attached the 220 volt three core cable to it and then pulled it all the way back to the saloon. So that was a really really helpful thing because uh, threading that cable through the boat without that would have been nigh on impossible. And another bonus was I had enough of the 3-core 220 cable to run it right back to the AC panel where I could connect it to the circuit breaker for the battery charger that's in the saloon. So that's worked out really well. I'm quite happy to have this battery charger connected to the circuit breaker. So should anything go wrong then we've got a circuit breaker which should trip if it's, uh, if it's bad enough. So now all that remains to be done is to put the boat back together and then go for a shower and then have a beer. It's another job ticked off the list. Feels really good.